Parkinson's disease affects nearly a million Americans. It affects people of all ages, ethnic backgrounds, and financial circumstances. It can strike any one of us. When the doctor leaned towards me and said, I'm 85% sure that you have Parkinson's, I didn't hear anything else that he said for the rest of the appointment. I mean, it was just like, and I didn't hear it. He was talking, but I didn't hear it. I sat there as if I were stone cold. It seemed like an eternity to me, probably was a minute. I wasn't sure what it meant that I was told I had Parkinson's disease at that point. What kind of pill do I take for that? Because it went right over my head. I didn't understand. My kids were 6 and 11 at the time, and I was shocked, actually, to contemplate to know what's you know, coming down the road and to contemplate that when you're 45 years old. It's, it's scary. It's, it's, it's really hard to deal with. Hello, I'm Virginia Grace. I'll be your host for the next 20 minutes in this educational video for people who have recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's has many mysteries, but one thing is certain, you are not alone. Nearly a million Americans have Parkinson's, and you're going to hear from some of them about how they've learned to live with the disease. You'll also hear from physicians, scientists, and other professionals who can help you broaden your understanding of the disease and learn about what you can do to manage your symptoms and your life. One of the first hurdles everyone faces is how to deal with the diagnosis. Each one of us is unique, and we respond in our own way. But you may recognize some familiar thoughts and feelings and what these people with Parkinson's have to tell us about how they reacted to the news. After two years of not knowing what was wrong with me, all I kept saying was just give me a name. Just put a name on it. I don't care what name you put on it. Put a name on it. Give me a pill and let me, I'm, let me, let me go on with my life because this is terrible not knowing what's wrong with me. I don't care what it is. Just give it a name. And, and that's the way I still feel. I got a name. I got a pill. Let me go on with my life. When people ask me how I felt upon being diagnosed with Parkinson's, my answer is relieved um, because it wasn't the brain tumor. It wasn't chorioathetosis, it wasn't myasthenia gravis, it wasn't any of the other things I've been looked at, uh, but potentially having. My first reaction was um, fear, uh, shock probably, uh, just you know, cold wave <laughs> of complete shock. Even though I was expecting to hear something like that, it's still when you actually hear it, it, it just gives you a cold chill and, and um, you know, you, you just are in... Uh, kind of like a numb fog for a while. And probably two questions come to, to mind whenever you're first diagnosed. How did I get it? And am I going to die? Well, the answer to the first one is not so easy. We still don't know. There are a number of ways that you could have gotten it. And then the second question, before I go back to that one, was am I going to die? Well, that's the easy question. Everybody's going to die. So. <laughs> But how soon am I going to die? And am I going to die a terrible death because of Parkinson's? My answer is no, because my neurologist said, you're young, there's a lot of research going on right now, but I feel like that there is hope. There's great hope, more hope now than ever before. Understanding what Parkinson's disease is can help take some of the anxiety out of the diagnosis. Although many of its mysteries have yet to be solved, our knowledge grows day by day. Parkinson's disease is a condition that involves a certain part of the brain called the basoganglia or extrapyramidal motor system. And it's a relatively small area of our brain, roughly 5% of our brain. And yet it plays a major role in how we move and how we maintain our posture. This part of the brain is controlled or influenced by a system called a dopamine system. These dopamine cells are relatively few and tend to degenerate normally with aging. However, in patients with Parkinson, for reasons we don't understand, they degenerate earlier than normal and at a faster rate. This leads to a loss of ability to move, it causes tremor, causes rigidity, 
difficulty with initiating movements, and at times it involves walking and balance. It's often said that Parkinson's stands out as a neurodegenerative condition that is uh, first and foremost the most likely to be cured. That is said because the pathology of this disorder is fairly simple. It's a loss predominantly of dopaminergic neurons in the midbrain. So it's clear which neurons are lost and what to do about it. Parkinson's is an extremely individualized illness. Nobody gets all the symptoms of Parkinson's disease. I think it's important that someone can go through that and explain that to people so that they're not just reading a list of symptoms and kind of waiting for all these things to happen to them. I've worked with many people at the time of diagnosis, and uh, one of my observations is that everybody's different in each stage of living with Parkinson's. So the needs of people are different at different stages. Well, there's good reason to be hopeful about the future. We still have some sensitive issues to confront in the present. One of the most delicate is whether or not to reveal the diagnosis to others. Most people do feel a sense of relief after they tell others, but it's often not easy getting to that point. sharing your diagnosis with family members like was that hard to do with their problems did you did you elect not to do that I shoved everyone away from me everyone my wife kids everyone I, I, I hibernated on the computer it's easy to do. yeah and one, once I began to come to terms with everything I think it brought us back together I hit it I hit it for um, I think it might be about seven or eight years after diagnosis, I, I didn't tell anybody at school. Um, or I, I, There were just a couple people I told. And I, I didn't even tell all my family members at first. Um, I didn't want to be the sick person. I was only 42, and I didn't want to be looked at as a sick person. And, uh, you know, so I didn't really seek out a lot of knowledge or support. What kept you from telling people? Oh, because I'm an actor. And finally, uh, it got to the point where people knew there was something wrong and a funny story the last stage play I did one of the reviews said Alex Montesino was stiff in the role <laughs> <laughs> so it was time to be honest about it and how did you feel when you deal did with it? How did you feel when you did that? Much better. I think not being able to talk about your diagnosis um, and trying to hide symptoms causes an extreme level of stress. Stress makes all the symptoms of Parkinson's worse. You may see more tremor, you may have more slowness, you may see more fatigue. Um, anything that can be done to help reduce stress for a person with Parkinson's is important. Parkinson patients, when I see them, especially early on, tend to feel as if it's a shame to have Parkinson. They are undecided whether they should tell their friends, their family, and so on. I always say to them, look, you didn't get this because you smoked too much or drank too much or whatever. This is a condition that any of us can get. And we have no way to prevent it. And I believe you're going to be more uncomfortable trying to hide it than if you bring it to the surface and explain to your friends and relatives that this is, a, this is what you have and you need to be treated for it. One of the questions a person newly diagnosed with Parkinson's will ask is, what kind of changes will I have to make in my life? Well, we're all different and no one answer fits everyone. Perhaps the best approach is to understand that you'll be able to make decisions as you go depending on what you feel is right at the time. My advice to a newly diagnosed patient would be exactly to try to live their lives as they want to. They have every reason to hope that within their course of this condition, there will be major advances in therapy and perhaps a cure. So absolutely, they should live their lives in the way that they want as best they can. Doctors tell us there are ways to make living with Parkinson's easier. One of these is, of course, medications, which are more effective today than they ever were. Another is diet. 
A third is exercise. New medications will continue to become available and you're going to want to learn about them so you can be an effective partner with your doctor in your own care. Read, research, uh, look at each medication that you're taking, understand why you're taking it, how much you're taking, what the effects might be if you're taking a little bit more or a little bit less of it. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions uh, of your doctors, of other people. Uh, just in any way that you can, be proactive to, and understand that there's nobody that is going to help you as much as you yourself can. You have to concede to the fact that you are going to live with medication, and it really helps. It helps me anyway, and I think it would help other people too. Eating a healthy, well-balanced diet is important for all of us. For those who are taking Parkinson's medications, increased fiber intake can be helpful in encouraging the appropriate absorption of levodopa. Increased fiber intake, along with an increase in fluids, can also help to reduce or eliminate common gastrointestinal effects, such as constipation. Another important discipline for people who live with Parkinson's is exercise. Exercise can have many benefits, psychological, emotional, as well as physical. I think it's extremely important for anyone recently diagnosed with Parkinson's disease to visit with a physical therapist and talk about the best way to set up a movement and exercise program for follow through. Beyond medications, um, I think active stretching and exercise is probably the second most important thing that someone with Parkinson's disease can do as part of a comprehensive treatment program. I'm a strong believer in group exercise programs. Tai Chi is a good example because it brings people together. It also it focuses on the issues that are difficult for a Parkinson patient, that is balance. It's better to do stretching exercises because if you really analyze your movements with Parkinson, you do things in a restricted movement or restricted range, and therefore your muscles don't get the full range of motion. Many community centers and fitness centers offer exercise classes that are appropriate for people with Parkinson's. It's important not to overdo it, and as in every other aspect of your care, you should be sure to consult with your doctor before undertaking an exercise program. What are the most effective things that you do to combat this disease? Stay busy. Exercise, exercise yeah. Exercise. Uh, walks. Yeah. Anything to get out of the house. If you stay cooped up in the house, depression will set in. And sometimes you have to pretend that you're feeling well and go out. And eventually you actually do feel better because you're out doing something good. So if, if you force yourself to go out and maybe go to the theater or go to the movies when you really could just as well stay home and lay in bed, you end up feeling better about yourself. Another way people living with Parkinson's can actively help themselves is to seek out support from family, friends and loved ones, but also from support groups. People who have been through what you are going through and know how it feels. Every support group is different and if possible it's often helpful to visit several groups to see where you feel most comfortable. Of course not everyone feels comfortable in a support group and it's important for each individual to do what's best for him or her. I um, was surfing on the internet um, one night and came across an online support group the first message I sent to it was, um, I've just been diagnosed and I'm scared as hell. And within hours I got responses from people like all over the world, people my age, people who've had Parkinson's for a long time, and many, I, I still continue, um, you know, corresponding with a lot of them. But that's, that's, I think, what helped me the most is finding other people. You know, the Parkinson's community has really been my foundation for moving forward in my life. It's a, it's a relief to drop the facade and just have Parkinson's because you do and there's nothing you can do about that. And it helped me feel better about how to, how to deal with it and knowing how other people deal with it. 
that you're not the only one. People who were diagnosed with Parkinson's often feel isolated in the early stages. And if you can find someone else who has some understanding of what you're going through and can talk about that with you, it's in itself therapeutic. It's also good simply to talk, simply to talk, to tell your own story. In addition to online and in-person support groups, there are many other opportunities to connect with people with Parkinson's. Among these are the annual Parkinson's Unity Walk in New York City and Team Parkinson events in Los Angeles and San Francisco, as well as other events in other communities. We're a chat room group over the internet and we've just all become family. Well, this week we decided that we wanted to come to the walk and there's only two of us that have ever met. The rest of us have never met face to face. And we put it together and it's been about the best weekend I think any of us have ever spent. These are the first people that I have met personally in my life that have Parkinson's besides myself. And the Parkinson's chat room is where we get, go to get support and understanding from each other and also a lot of humor. We give each other we give each other a real rash of trouble sometimes. As much as we have Parkinson's, so do our families. They live with it every day by choice. And we don't, but they have a choice. They can either stick with us or go the other way. And we've known some to go the other way and, and that happens. But the ones that stick choose. We don't choose. They're extremely special. We always say to people the worst thing you could do when you have Parkinson's is nothing. The more active you can be, physically active, mentally active, socially active, all those aspects are extremely important. We have yet to find a cure for Parkinson's, but scientists are making progress. They are hopeful, and that gives us reason to be hopeful as well. The rate of discovery in Parkinson's disease has never been faster. The, the rate of discovery is tremendous on several fronts. In relation to genetic discoveries, in relation to the underlying cause of neuron loss in this disease, this is a real reason for hope. And let me give an example. There is a medication in a large double-blind trial now, 800 patients, three years ago. This medication was strictly under basic studies in a laboratory. So it happens that fast. So patients should keep in mind there's a real reason for hope in their future. One of the most promising areas of study for the long term is research involving stem cells. So they can become cells that can produce insulin, they can become bone marrow cells, and they can become brain cells. So it's important for the patient to realize that this could be a source of cells for the replacement of dopaminergic neurons, those that are lost in Parkinson's disease. And I would say uh, that is the greatest area of promise at this point in time. Once scientists have made their initial discoveries, tests must be done to make sure that the new treatments work safely, first in animals, then in human beings. Clinical trials are research studies intended to help answer specific questions about a treatment by studying its effect in people. Participation in clinical trials is often available to someone who has just been diagnosed with Parkinson's. If you are interested in participating in a clinical trial, ask your doctor for more information. Clinical trials offer the best opportunity to participate in the most advanced new medications for the disease. Generally, trials are founded on very good medical information, preclinical evaluation, even preliminary clinical assessments. So often there's a very real hope that these new approaches may help. There are a number of ways in which a newly diagnosed patient can uh, gather information about available clinical trials. They can speak to their physician, who often is aware. Uh, in addition, there are a number of websites that list available clinical trials. But in any case, it's most important that they discuss these possibilities with their treating physician. When patients ask, when there will be a cure. It, it is so important to me and, and my fellow investigators that we not give them false hopes. Uh, so when they ask for a time, the best we can in good conscience tell them is that the pace is quickening and the discoveries are many 
and there's very good reason that there will be a cure. When patients ask, do I believe that one day there will be a cure, I say, yes, I do. I believe that. When it will be is a tougher question. It's harder to put an exact time frame on it, but there will be. My work has enabled me to get to know the research community and to know quite a bit about what, what they're doing and where they are, and they are so hopeful that that makes me hopeful because I know Parkinson's is the most curable brain disorder there is, and that if they can get enough money and focus enough on the remaining scientific questions they have, they can get the treatments we need and get it cured. That's thrilling. We hope this video has helped you learn more about Parkinson's disease and has helped you realize that in facing this diagnosis, you are not alone. In coping with Parkinson's disease, like so many things in life, we can make choices in our actions and in our attitudes that will make a difference. In putting Parkinson in perspective, it's for me, it's, it's um, I have to think of it kind of as a, a co-worker that I don't get along with. You know, you have those co-workers or those people in the PTA or wherever you're involved in life that you just, you know, just rub wrong, you know, there's just something about that person. But you have to work with them, you have to be on the team with them, and you have to find a way. There are people who are living with it and dealing with it, and that it's, it's not all a bed of roses, but it's not, maybe it's not as bad. I think the unknown is always worse than the known. And if you see people who are dealing with it, it's easier for you. People have to realize that, yeah, after you first get diagnosed, yeah, it's okay to be angry. but. You have to know that there is hope at the end of the tunnel. If somebody came to me and said, I just got diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's, the first thing I would do is hug them and tell them that the sky's still really blue and it's a really crappy diagnosis, but it's not a death sentence, okay? It's not. Life doesn't end with Parkinson's. You can continue to work as well as you've worked in the past. And it should be encouraged because the best thing that a Parkinson patient can do is, is not to withdraw, but to be active and to carry on. In some ways, there's no right answer for everybody. And it's looking for your right answer. Really kind of looking at what do you really want um, instead of stepping back and saying, wow, this is going to stop me. It's like, what is this going to open up for me? Um, what do I really want to do? What is really of value and importance and meaning and how do I really maximize that? It's not the best way to live, but it's not the worst way to live. There's a, there's a lot worse things than what this, you know, this, this might be a little bit discomfort and might be a little bit worse than, than that at times, but it's a lot better than a lot of other things. Everything is relative and this, believe me, this is much better. I may not be able to use my right arm at times, but I still have it. In facing this disease, you must maintain your sense of hope and optimism. To give in to despair makes it harder for your physician to treat you. It makes it harder for you to fight against this disease. So for both good scientific reasons and for important personal medical reasons, you must maintain hope. You can't walk this path alone, is all I want to say. You know, there's people out there with their hands waiting to help you. You just got to reach out. You know, I have taken myself up by my own bootsteps, not bragging, but I'm just saying, that's the way you conquer it. You've got to take it into your own hands. Take the reins and say, I'm bigger than this. I can beat this thing. I can't cure it, but I can definitely live with it. This booklet, Diagnosis Parkinson's Disease, You Are Not Alone, contains helpful information including a list of print and internet resources. To get a copy of this booklet, or if you have questions about Parkinson's disease, contact the Parkinson's Disease Foundation at the address on your screen. You may also find information on the other national Parkinson's organizations at the end of this booklet, or by visiting the Parkinson's Disease Foundation's website, www.pdf.org.